Okay, there's a little tutorial on how the online meetings or online rooms are going to work. Um, it, in order to use the online rooms, the first thing you do is get into Desire to Learn, um, into our class under Desire to Learn, and then what you will want to do is use the tab that says online rooms right up here. Okay, this will bring up our online rooms. And the online rooms, one of the rooms will be lectures. If you're interested in the meeting, that happens on Monday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. Simply click this tab and that will get you into the online um, um, meeting, the Monday meeting. Do that, oh, anywhere from say about a quarter to six, all the way up to eight o'clock actually. But um, um, in fact, this room's never closed. You can do it anytime you want, but I will be there from six to eight p.m. on Mondays. If you're interested in the tutorials, they're held from six to eight p.m. on Friday evenings. And um, if you're interested in them, click the tab that says tutorials on Friday evening and join us. Um, okay, if you're interested, in, uh, if a few students are interested in meeting at any time or if I want to meet somebody, we can do that um, for office hours, we can do this in the student lounge, which I call Z student lounge because the only way to order these things in Desire to Learn is in alphabetical order, so I wanted to use a Z to keep that towards the bottom. Okay, um, this one works a little different than the other ones because you have to have a moderator to run the show. If you go in, so you can totally run your own show. You don't have to have me there or anything like that. For the other two meetings, you really do need me because I'm the only moderator, unless I assign somebody else to be a moderator, which I can do and I don't mind doing. Okay, the meeting, some of the meetings, particularly the Monday night meetings, will probably be recorded. And when we record those, they go under the archives button. So let's look and see what's under archives. Under archives, we have a test room one here, which was recorded. And this one comes under test room. Let's just simply watch this. Now, we can't participate in this because it's not live. This is just a recording of a meeting that happened. But by clicking here, we'll see what it's like to go into the rooms. OK. Let's click on this. It then comes up with a mess of warning messages and various things. Fundamentally, it wants to open something in Java, and it's asking me permission to do that. I'm saying, yes, we can open in Java. That does mean you have to have a good version of Java installed on your computer to, in order to use this. Uh, all the computers in the lab, I believe, have this. and. Um, most Windows computers have this. Some of the Linux machines, the Java might be a little bailing wired unless you install the newest version. Um, I run this from Linux, but you, if you have any trouble running this, but it is a little tricky to run this software from Linux. It works well once it's all configured, but it is a little tricky to configure since this is a Linux, a class on Linux systems administration. Um, you might be best running this on Windows until you get further into the class and then you should be able to configure it and run it on Linux. Okay, let's hit the run button and this will run the um, JavaScript, or I'm sorry, the Java program that has just been downloaded. Okay, this is bringing everything up. It says, do we want to um, trust this certificate? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. And then the um, class which was held will start playing back for me. I can see down here that there should be some sound that is coming across. 
for some reason my sound's not quite working right on this machine, but it does work right. When I went to another machine, uh, the sound worked just fine. It's simply that, um, I think it's simply that I've got too much running on here. In particular, I've got the all the software running that uses the sound card to make the video that you're watching right now. So the result is um, some of the sound stuff in um, Illuminate isn't working quite right on this particular machine. In general, it works just fine. Um, and, well, I should say a little bit about Illuminate. Um, the moderator is up here. Yeah, as I said, the sound's not coming out, so it's building up in a big buffer. Let's uh, uh, let it erase that sound. I'm allowed to give anybody, any of the students that have a microphone, I can give them control over the microphone. I can give them control over their webcam if they have a webcam. You don't have to have a microphone. You don't have to have a webcam. does help if you have a microphone. Um, you probably do have to have speakers or a uh, set of he headphones or something like that. If you do have a microphone, the type that I like is the type that has headphones built in especially noise-canceling headphones, that makes the sound come up much clearer. Um, something fairly inexpensive works just fine. Um, in fact, I know people that give professional podcasts that use 30 or $40 set of headphones for, um, um, for work that I would consider to be studio work. OK, another thing you can do is this has an area for whiteboards. So we can set up whiteboards, and we can write on the whiteboards. Uh, this has an area where if you have a question, you can raise your hand. Uh, you can then either ask the question via the microphone, or you can ask it um, by typing it in um, in a messaging field. Or um, Illuminate does have a system where we can use telephones too, but I don't know if that's configured in PCC's version of Illuminate. Um, maybe we could come up with something with Skype. Um, yeah, uh, that would probably mean I'd have to run two computers, but I can do that. Um, the other thing we have is uh, there's an area where we can share an application or actually share the entire desktop. And since I am using Linux as my desktop, um, that means I can actually display things in real time. Um, oh, and what I'm displaying here is apparently bringing up Illuminate. Um, um, yes. It looks complicated here. Apparently, I'm burning a DVD at the same time on that machine. Um, and I'm running a copy of Illuminate. Um, that's kind of weird. Illuminate within Illuminate. Um, us mathematicians like to do that. We, we kind of like to nest things running one thing within another thing within another thing. Um, Sometimes you can't see the entire desktop. You've got to pan and zoom to see it. But um, well, that gives you an idea. Now, I just went back to, I killed the desktop and went back to the, um, um, to the original um, whiteboards. And I'm switching whiteboards here. Um, I believe I'm just about done with this. Well, I got a couple more minutes here, but I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know it made another whiteboard. Well, terrific. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about with the um, online rooms? I really don't think there is. Um, 
I think they work pretty well. I have taken a couple classes using a different system, but using something like Illuminate, and I've enjoyed them very much. The one was being taught by an instructor from Germany, and he was sitting in Germany. I was sitting in Vancouver, Washington, as I recall, um, and everything worked out good. Um, I took another class on web development using this system. We had students all over North America and um, I actually we were able to build some class camaraderie. I think this, I hope to see this be kind of the future of online education. Now I, I will mention one other thing before we end this. Um, I guess we are um, Illuminate session is just ended, so we'll try to kill the Illuminate system. Unfortunately, something's wrong. It's not killing right, but um, I can take care of that later. However, before I end, I want to say that, of course, this is a very expensive system called Illuminate. It's owned by Black, or they have been purchased by Blackboard Corporation. There's a couple other competitors around, and in some ways, this is like things like a WebEx or um, GoToMeeting or, or systems of that type. They're all rather expensive. There must be an open source equivalent to this. And true enough, there is. There's one called Big, Big Blue Button. I've never used Big Blue Button, but uh, one of these days I'm in to install Big Blue Button and use it. Uh, However, um, since this is PCC's official system and it's paid for by the taxpayers of Oregon and by you dear students who spend lots of money in tuition, um, we will be using the Illuminate. And I'm actually pretty happy with the Illuminate. It performs quite well. So that should be enough for now. Bye-bye. Um,